welcome to my YouTube channel. So this morning I've come up to Glencoe and I thought we'd have a wee scout around the Glencoe waterfall, which everyone calls as the meeting of the three waters. I was expecting the waterfall to be pretty thunderous because we've had crazy rain over the last two weeks and I thought, I thought the waterfall would have been mega impressive. It's pretty subdued, it's still impressive. So what we'll do is we'll wander down to the base of the waterfall. I've never actually been down at the base. All the photographs I've previously taken have always been up the top, up here. And let's have a wee wander round about the base of the waterfall and see what compositions and photographs we can get this morning. So I'm at the base of the waterfall and what I've done is I've seen a little composition where the waterfall's coming down on the left hand side but there's a small little brook area at the bottom here so what I was going to try and do is see if I can get a composition where I can get the waterfall coming in from the left now I put my polarizer on obviously because we're at water I'll just adjust the polarizer so I can see through the water. I've set my camera to an eighth of a second, F8 ISO 100. I've focused on that rock. So I'm just going to check that I've got the texture in the waterfall that I'm looking for. And yep, the texture is really nice. So what I've done is I've turned the camera around a little bit so I've got some of those trees in the composition as well. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take another shot. I want to check, I think I'm far enough away that the foreground should be pretty much in focus. Yep. So what I could do now is I could just flip the camera over onto portrait mode and then turn the polarizer around because what I want to try and do is get, there's a stream coming in underneath my feet. And if I can try and get as much of that into the composition as we possibly can, I'll keep my focal point the same. Yep, that's a really nice image. So the other image I want to try and do is focus in on those small rapids. <laughs> rapids, that, those small, um, a wee tiny brook feature of the water coming through. So I'll zoom in and just see how that looks. Now I've got to refocus. I'll focus in on one of the rock there. Take the shot and I'm just going to double check how that looks. And yeah that looks quite that looks really nice.
Okay, so I've got this rock formation in front of me. I'm going to take a shot where the rock formation is going to be in the foreground. I've got the waterfall coming down on the left hand side, but I've also got those trees on my right hand side, and the trees actually really make a nice composition here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus in on the side of the rocks and I might that's too dark what I might do is I might just speed up the shutter speed just a touch because I'm getting some highlight clippings in the waterfall there's some blue in the sky not very much so what I'll do just now is I'll take a three photo photo stack just so that I know that my foreground is absolutely in focus and as usual as I go along I'll share these images with you so you can actually see the compositions that I end up with so now what I want to do is I'm going to lower my tripod because I want the waterfalls to come in behind that rock I might have to go a bit lower so I've got it where I need it to be what I want what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for the waterfalls just to be peeking over this rock it's just so that I can get a different view because it's difficult when you take a photograph of the same thing all the time you've got to keep trying to find different perspectives um, and different compositions, different photograph opportunities because you just never know, sometimes when you leave a location that you're on it turns out to be really really nice so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick photo stack so the other thing is if I lift my tripod up and show you so another tip is I've got my camera facing away from that leg but the way to keep your camera steady is to have your lens facing over the leg and then that gives it that wee bit extra support and steadiness so what I was noticing there was my camera was tilting so let me re reposition myself I need to lower right that's what I want So as I move over, we've got some nice sun coming out behind us. The sun, because it's only half past seven in the morning, the sun won't hit the face of the waterfall because as the sun sweeps round to the west, because the sun sets over this direction above and past the Three Sisters. So effectively, we're at the base of the Three Sisters. This is the meeting of the three waters and this is the start of the River Coe that flows all the way down through Glencoe into Glencoe village and then ultimately into the sea loch of Loch Leven. so I've set up this composition I've seen a nice, there's a wee tree on the left hand side so what I was going to try and do is capture the little tree on the left hand side those trees I've been completely lit by the sun now so I'm going to have to increase my shutter speed to compensate I'll take my shot so I've got f11 a tenth of a second I'm just going to zoom in and check that yeah that's nice Okay, so as I'm walking across the burn, I'm right in front 
of the waterfall so I thought I'd get quite a nice composition shot but what I'm doing is I'm doing quite a tight crop so the top waterfall to the bottom waterfall and I've got this series of rocks in the base and I've got a f11 tenth of a second and I've had to up my ISO to 200 because it's quite dark in this area now what I'll do is I'll zoom out I'll just focus in again just to make sure my focus is correct and then I'll take that shot and that's a nice shot so we've got the wider view now what I'll do is I'm going to move round so I'm then focusing straight onto the waterfall because there's a few rocks and as the burn starts to go down through the small rapids that might also make quite a nice composition Okay, so now what I've got is the waterfall face on. I've got the river or the burn sweeping up on the right hand side or sweeping down on the right hand side. I've got the falls. I'm going to try and centre. Actually, centering the falls doesn't work really nice for the composition. I'm going to take out the top of the sky. Oh, I can have a wee seat. Now the sun's coming out behind the waterfall so what I'm focusing in on the centre of the falls just now So as I come over the other side of the burn, there's a wee gorge here and oh boy, this looks absolutely beautiful. I'm going to just adjust my um, ISO because the sun's lit up the back of the gorge. What I might do, is just to make sure I don't lose any detail here from a light perspective, I'm going to set up a bracket and shot. Well, I think I'll have a wee coffee just now because the sun was kind of getting in my way at the top of the falls. Now the, sun, the sun's away behind the clouds. There's a couple of tourists standing at the top of the falls, which actually I don't mind because that gives me scale in the image. And if I don't like it, I can take them out. But this, this is the meeting of the three waters and this is the start of the River Co. So you've got Coria Lake, and Korea, as I pronounce it, what I'll do is I'll put the names on top of the description and in that way, rather than me doing my pronunciations incorrectly and offend anyone, I'll put the names up. So I'll put the names of the two burns that converge, that can now then start to form the River Co. So there is debate whether this is actually the meeting of the three waters because <laughs> this is the famous tourist spot with the great Glencoe waterfall which is categorised as the meeting of the three waters but there is there are discussions where just about half a mile down the river just before you go up to the the secret valley there are two other burns that confluence into the river Co and some people will argue that that's Technically the start is where the three waters meet. Who knows? I've looked 
and I've tried to research to find exact information and it's not clear. So at the minute, it could go on to interpretation, but from a public tourist point of view, this waterfall is the area of the meeting of the three waters and this is the start of the River Co. So, I'm going to have my coffee and my breakfast bar and I'm going to wander up the burn behind me just to see if there's anything up there. I might just take a couple images. I've taken a panoramic shot of the waterfall but what I might do is just so that you can see where we are and really its entirety there's a road bridge that sweeps all the way around that passes the three waters and heads down towards the glen. So I'll take a panoramic shot just because we're underneath it and I've never been underneath it before. I've always ever been up the top of the waterfall. So I'll stop rabbiting on. I'll have my coffee and I'll catch up with you later on as we start to wander further in this area. Okay, so I've got the wee burn here in front of me and what there is, is there's a little trickle of water just coming down between the boulders it's actually quite, quite genteel um, actually this might be quite good for a photo stack because there's quite a bit of interest from the front so what I'll do is I'm going to focus in on the lower part of the wee burn just increase the f-stop if I increase it to about F16, then that saves me any oil. Oh, wow, that's stunning. Okay, so I, uh, <laughs> I followed the burn and that wee stream that I found was okay, I got a couple of shots but there wasn't really anything more to take and then I wondered what I could see if I climbed to the top of the hill so I've climbed to the top of the hill and there's a little peat burn here so I'm just going to take a couple of shots of the peat burn and then I'm going to take a shot of the view behind me because the view is stunning um, of the meeting of the three waters. It's absolutely beautiful. And I've also, what I'll do is I'll expose for the mountain from the stream. And I'll show you those images as I go forward. Hiked up behind those rocks. This is a uh, good training because my wife has signed us up to climb Ben Nevis in July. So if this is anything to go by, I've got a heck of a lot of training to do. So if I zoom in to those rocks, I'm trying to keep the road out of the image so the unfortunate thing I've lost the light um, but what I'll do is I'll make the most of it the sun, this would have been nice if the sun was out here and then see if that sun keeps through the cloud again because the sun's hitting the hills and the mountains again behind me so it's sweeping round there's a good chance we'll get a break in the cloud. OK, 
okay, so I've kind of traversed a bit across the mountain because I've seen a wee tree. I just thought I'd be nosy and have a look and see if there was any separation for the tree against the burns. But what it has done has given me a spectacular view of the, the Glencoe waterfall. So what I'll do is I'll take a photo of this tree that I climbed over here for. It's really steep so I need to be careful. And then I'll take some shots of the waterfall from this angle. If I turn round, oops, right, wow. So I've got, what I can do is zoom in, because what I'm trying to do is keep the road out of the image here. I'm going to try and slow the shutter speed down a bit, 10 eighth of a second, up the ISO. Down the hill. <laughs> so I've come to the far right of the waterfall where all the trees were that we took the photographs of earlier. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to use the two young trees in front of me as a frame and I'm going to focus on the bottom of the falls and I'm just going to see if that works. Um, so I'm, I don't want the leaves in focus, so I've got an F8, sorry, I've got F16 an eighth of a second and an ISO 100. What I might do is zoom. So if I zoom out, what I, I'm trying, so the reason I'm being careful here is, I actually don't want the bridge in my shot. So the bridge is right above me now, um, and I really don't want it in the shot. What I'll do is I'll, bring this camera over and I'll let you see how I'm taking these shots we'll just see if it works down again right now to the edge of the falls I'm just going to see I thought it might be a nice shot if I could get the edge of the water and then those trees in the background so let me just see if I can set this shot up the, the trees are there I'm going to have to chop the top of the trees off and the reason I'm doing that is I don't want that bridge in my shot which is a shame because, in fact, I'll just pull it out just a smidgen. Right, so I'm just going to level up my camera. So that's my camera level. I'm going to zoom in on the rock beside the waterfall. I've focused on the rock. I'll take my shot. I'm going to walk round to the, the front the right hand side front of the falls. I'll see if we can get some shots there. We'll try and use the rocks to get into the foreground. Whoops. And then what I'll do is I'll work my way back to the car, but I'll walk over the burn and I'll see if there's any shots of the burn as the leading line up towards the waterfall because we haven't done that yet. Alright, so what I'm doing is I'm using the river as it sweeps up to the right hand side so that the waterfall comes down on the right hand side, sweeps round and then comes down to where I am. 
So the other thing I'm doing is I'm conscious. I positioned the tripod so it's not in strong running water. Whereas the other night that was causing me vibrations. So what I'll do is I'll actually do a bracket exposure here. Because the light's quite intermittent. And I want to make sure I get the right light in this shot because this is actually really, really nice. Um, what I might do though is... Ah, that's nice. So if I do a portrait shot, and if I just drop the ISO quite a bit, if I adjust the polarizer, this could turn out to be quite a, a nice image. So what I'm doing here is I'm just focusing in on the center of the image. So the center of the image is that, that borderline of rock just in front of the waterfall. Because it's not that important that this waterfall's that detailed in this shot because my, my focal point is the foreground and the foreground is the river. So I've just moved it around a bit. Right, so I'll actually what I'll try and do here is I'll try and get another. I'll zoom in on the falls from here and I'll see if I can get a shot of the falls and focusing into the centre of the falls that rock that we took a shot of earlier with all the mist that the sun backlit which you can't see anymore and yeah that's a nice shot enjoyed that video this morning if you liked it please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed please do remember it's free and if you press the bell notification it'll let notify you the next time I publish another video so here's the next video and thank you